Hello and happy Easter. Jesus is alive. Today we celebrate once again the glorious ending of the Easter story. From the viewpoint of Jesus' disciple John, we have listened to Jesus of Nazareth as he talked about being connected to him and therefore his heavenly father. We have seen John sitting with Jesus at the Last Supper as Jesus humbly washed his friend's feet. We have seen Peter heartbroken as he realised he had disowned his friend. We have seen Jesus largely silent and non-defensive before the Jewish leaders and the Roman governor. We have seen Jesus achieve, achieve salvation for humanity on the cross. And we have seen him form a new relationship with his friend Mary as the risen Messiah. Today we are with the male disciples as they meet in a locked room. Let's read now from the Gospel of John. This is John 20, 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, then sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. After seeing what the Jewish leaders did to Jesus, the disciples are scared for themselves. Peter and John have seen that Jesus' tomb is empty. And Mary has told them that she met the risen Lord. But the reality of this has not yet hit them. Suddenly, Jesus is in the room with his friends. Peace be with you, he greets them. This is so much more than just saying good evening. By saying this, um, Jesus conjures up the whole idea of shalom. The Hebrew word for peace, shalom, signifies a wholeness, total well-being and the presence of the Lord. The disciples see the wounds on Jesus' body, which prove that he is indeed their leader, their friend who was crucified. Jesus continues, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus has a mission in the world to provide access to his heavenly Father by granting salvation. Now he is passing this mission on to those he has taught. Their urgent task will now be to tell people of the difference his crucifixion and resurre resurrection has made, of the faith in Jesus that leads to our sins being forgiven. There will be those who will accept Jesus and receive forgiveness, and sadly those who do not accept him and do not receive forgiveness. So as Jesus comes into the room, his friends believe that he is indeed risen again. Um, the peace that he gives them is about a whole life well-being. Um, and their urgent task now is to go into the world telling people about his death and resurrection. As, the, as God the Father has sent Jesus, so Jesus is now sending his disciples into the world. The disciples, however, will not be unsupported in their mission. During his last meal with them, Jesus has said that he would be leaving them, but they would have a new friend to accompany them. This advocate, comforter, encourager or counsellor is the Holy Spirit. The way in which God makes his presence felt for those who believe in him. Jesus has promised the Holy Spirit to those who followed him during his earthly life. He gives it to them after the resurrection and it will be poured out in full on the day of Pentecost, when even people from other countries outside the disciples' dwelling will be affected by it and hear about the resurrection in their own native language. So there's this mysterious thing that Jesus now gives them, the Holy Spirit. Um, you can't see it, you can't touch it, but it's there and it, it gives comfort, it gives encouragement, it gives counsel, it gives power. Um, so Jesus has already promised this when he's having his last meal with his friends. Now he gives it to them. And in the book of Acts, we will read about its further outpouring when people can speak in languages they've never learned by its power so they can tell the good news of Jesus to all those gathered outside in the streets. The Holy Spirit changes everything. There are only hints of it in the Hebrew Bible. 
One place we see its power is in the book of Ezekiel. So let's read from the book of Ezekiel now. So this is Ezekiel 37, lines 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tenders and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy, son of man, prophesy to the breath and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Ezekiel was a prophet to the Israelite people who had been exiled from their homeland and felt like there was no hope for them as a people. The Lord shows her that this is not the case. He tells Ezekiel to prophesy over some bones. Flesh appears on them, but they are still dead bodies. Then the Lord tells Ezekiel to breathe from the four winds. This wind or air in motion is also breath and the spirit of the Lord. Breath from God has given life to the first man, Adam. Now Ezekiel, by accessing the Holy Spirit, brings an army back to life. Although it is unlikely that Ezekiel would have believed in bodily resurrection in his time, many see this story as a foreshadowing of Jesus rising from the dead, the first fruit of all who believe. Indeed, that I have done it, says the Lord, reminds me of when Jesus says in the book of John on the cross, it is finished, it is completed, accomplished. So the Holy Spirit changes everything. We see that in Ezekiel, um, where a dead army comes back to life. And we will see this um, after Jesus' resurrection in an even more dramatic and amazing way. The spirit of the resurrected Jesus transforms everything. Our three-in-one God is Father, Son and Spirit. The Spirit gives us peace, joy, strength and guidance in our everyday lives if we will just ask God for it. In 1968, a Greek Orthodox bishop, the Metropolitan Ignatius of um, Latakia, Syria, spoke to the Ecumenical Council of Churches about the difference the Holy Spirit makes. He talked about the difference between without the Holy Spirit and in and with the Holy Spirit. So he said, without the Holy Spirit, God is far away. In and with the Holy Spirit, the risen Christ is here and now. Without the Holy Spirit, God is a, uh, the gospel rather, is a dead letter. With and in in and with the Holy Spirit, gospel is the power of life. Without the Holy Spirit, church is simply an organisation. In and with the Holy Spirit, the church shows forth the life of the Trinity. Without the Holy Spirit, authority is a matter of domination. With the Holy Spirit, authority is a liberating service. Without the Holy Spirit, liturgy is no more than evocation. The words that we sometimes say together in church is no more than just trying to conjure up God. 
uh, in and with the Holy Spirit, liturgy is both memorial and anticipatory. So it's about the past and the future. Without the Holy Spirit, Christian living is a slave mentality. But in and with the Holy Spirit, human action is deified. We have God within us. People outside the church can sometimes view Christians as a kind of nice Sunday morning club. Fine if you like that kind of thing, harmless, ineffectual. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ has transformed everything. The church is not a history society. We read ancient texts, but they have power, life and relevance for today. We are not following rules for the sake of rules. God wants us to have the best life possible, not just after bodily death, but during our life in this world. Following his teaching and his nudges day by day, God gives us the opportunity to live that better life now and not to engage in a dead end chase to nothingness. So rather than being irrelevant and historical, um, the Christian faith um, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, followers of Jesus have power, life and relevance for today. That better life is also available to others who have not yet discovered it. Everybody hurts, everybody sins, everybody needs Jesus. It's the urgent task of every follower of Jesus to tell people our own stories of how he has made a difference in our lives and to ask them what they think about God. We need to speak out. Perhaps we're afraid of what God might ask us to do and of how we will manage it. He may mess with our human plans, but he will not leave us unsupported. The Holy Spirit is available to give us the guidance and the strength that we all need. We can also rest in the presence of God and experience joy and calm that only he can give us. Jesus, on this Easter day, is now standing amongst us, offering us shalom. Peace be with you, he says. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. He breathes on us and declares, receive the Holy Spirit, the transforming spirit of my resurrection. Let it guide and empower you as you follow me and join in with my mission in this world. Happy Easter.